The list of Stephen King's cultural achievements and his contribution to our culture can go on and on. But I'm sure you are all wondering at this point, what does this have to do with data governance? Most of us know Stephen King as a great writer and a great storyteller. His books have been translated into over 30 different languages, published in over 35 different countries. There are over 350 million copies of his novels in publication, with some of his most notable books being Carrie, The Shining, The Stand, The Green Mile, The Dark Tower series, and many more. He's a recipient of numerous awards and nominations. The list of Stephen King's cultural achievements and his contribution to our culture can go on and on. But I'm sure you are all wondering at this point, what does this have to do with data governance? A while ago, I read a few excerpts from King's manual on writing. Yeah, that's what it's called, on writing, where he offers advice to aspiring writers. Now, to my surprise, some pieces of advice are quite relevant to data governance practitioners. So here are Stephen King's five rules for data governance practitioners. The first rule, you only have three months. Stephen's advice refers to giving yourself only three months to first draft a book, even a long one. This is how this advice also applies to data governance program in general. Now, everyone agrees that starting and running a data governance program can be a daunting task. There are a lot of reasons why that is. But as you can imagine, there are a lot of things that need to be done, a lot of politics to navigate, and a lot of data, stakeholders, and business requirements to evaluate and to tackle. That being said, it's important to start showing some value of the data governance program within its first three months. Otherwise, stakeholders will start losing faith in the program and really shift their focus and support elsewhere. You have at most three months to start building up credibility and show that things are moving forward. And there are a lot of low hanging fruits that you can go after. Some of which being establishing a data governance council, putting together their terms of reference, creating a data governance scorecard, deciding on your operational framework, developing a data inventory, a data quality issues log, a business glossary, and so much more. At least just start with the first three that I mentioned in this list. And no matter what, don't forget to communicate back to the business. The second rule, there are two secrets to success, only two. For Stevens, it's staying healthy and in the same relationship, but the same can be extrapolated to your data governance program. Keep your program healthy and ongoing by ensuring first that you have a C-level sponsor or high enough in your organization that it can ensure overall support. Better yet, have multiple sponsors. And second, make sure that your data governance is treated as a program. The last one is as important as the sponsorship. You want something ongoing, not a project with an end date. Ongoing resources and support solidifies the relationship between the business and its data. Slowly, data will be treated and managed as the asset that it is. Third rule, keep it simple. Now, I think this advice can apply to many things from writing and communicating in general, all the way to your data governance program. Why? Because truth is, a data governance program can be overwhelmingly complex. Our job as data governance leads and practitioners is to try and simplify it. Break it down into manageable chunks and don't try to boil the ocean. You also don't need to govern all of your data, really. I mean, just understand what data sets relate to the core business needs and start there. And here's a tip, start with your reference data. Fourth rule, dig. Mark Singer asked Stephen in an interview how a writer can find great stories. Look at me referring to Stephen King as Stephen, like we're best buds or something. Anyways, Mark Singer asked Stephen in an interview how a writer can find great stories. 
And Stephen's reply? Dig. Just dig. Now Stephen believed that stories are found things, like fossils in the ground. And he also meant that in order to dig for a great story, you have to dig for the truth. As you can imagine, there are a lot of analysis that needs to go into the data governance program, from finding the root cause of data issues, tracing the data lineage, to uncovering the stakeholders and the data stewards you need to engage with. Plus, what data should be governed first? Whatever you choose to tackle, don't forget to dig further and uncover the truth. And fifth rule, the last rule, recuperation time. Now, after completing one of his stories, the king, always likes to take a step back from it to really analyze his work. Though you should have a plan with those programs deliverables and constantly work for it, don't forget to also have a recuperation period for each deliverable in order to celebrate success and the people who contributed to it, communicate what was done, why it was done, and what's to come. Check out the three communication steps for successful data governance video for more information on this one. Also, you need to have feedback and get that feedback on what worked, why didn't work, and what can be improved. And these are Stephen King's five rules for data governance. What advice do you have for fellow and future data governance practitioners? Please let me know, please let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to like the video if you've enjoyed the Stephen King's take on data governance, and please click the subscribe and bell buttons as it would really help me out. Thank you.